Have you ever heard that the beauty of wealth is in its dressing? Well, in simple terms, that means that wealth can easily be spotted in appearance. The possession of gold, jewelry, affluence, and properties was what defined wealth some centuries back, and they were a great sight to behold. Mansa Musa definitely met all of those descriptions, and even surpassed them, with an estimated net worth of $400 billion in today's value. Manza Musa was a symbol of wealth in the 14th century ancient kingdom of Mali, and his wealth spread throughout Africa. To Manza Musa, gold was like tokens, easily given away. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. If today's your very first time here, you are most welcome. Today, we will be talking about a man very important to history and the lifestyle he lived in his days, the man Mansa Musa. Also known as Musa I of Mali, Mansa Musa was born in the year 1280. He succeeded Magan Musa, his father, as the emperor of the Mali kingdom in 1307. At the time of his ascension to the throne, Mali included the territory of the former Ghana Empire, which it had conquered, and the lands that are now part of Guinea, Senegal, Mauritania, and Gambia. So you can see they were a very prosperous nation by all accounts. Mansa Musa might have inherited a large portion of his wealth. However, he was able to create much more wealth and global recognition for both himself and his kingdom while he was ruling. He made more wealth for himself by mining significant salt and gold deposits in the kingdom. Elephant ivory was another major source of wealth from which he made a lot of money. Mansa was a hard-working emperor who knew what he wanted and went for it. However, even with his tremendous wealth and impressive pedigree, he was still only known and respected by Africans. All of that changed, though, in the year 1324, the 17th reign of the emperor. Mansa set out to Mecca for pilgrimage, as is required of every Muslim who can afford it. And it was the famous journey that awakened the world to the tremendous wealth of Mali. He was accompanied by an impressive caravan which consisted of 60,000 men and 12,000 servants, all clad in brocade and Persian silk. He rode on horseback and was directly preceded by 500 servants, each carrying 300 pounds of gold, and a baggage train of 80 camels with each carrying 300 pounds of gold. Just think about how much gold he was traveling with for a second. Maybe it was his generosity and piety or the beautiful clothes and exemplary behavior of his followers. Whichever, Mansa Musa didn't fail to create an impression as he went through Egypt on his way to Mecca. He was quite lavish with spending, so lavish that en route to Mecca, he spent some time in Cairo, and during that time, he flooded the Cairo market with so much gold that it caused a massive inflation spike, which crashed Egypt's markets. It took Egypt over a decade to recover. Mansa Musa certainly knew what he was doing. He intentionally went with all of his wealth and acquisitions to show off the flamboyance of both Mali and himself to the world, far beyond the regions of Africa. He wanted to awaken the Muslim kingdoms of North Africa and also European nations to his incredible wealth. Probably as a souvenir from his trip, the universe favored him. While on his trip to Mecca, he expanded the borders of Mali, incorporating the cities of Gao and Timbuktu into his territory by capturing the Songhai capital of Gao. Glad of his new acquisitions, he visited Gao to receive the personal submission of the king of Songhai, and also take the king's two sons as hostages. This defined him as a man of strength and valor. Mansa also showed that he is a man of taste and quality. Hence, he brought architects from the Middle East and across Africa to design new buildings for his newly acquired cities. He built mosques and large public buildings. The Gao Mosque was built of burnt bricks, a feat which made it the first of its kind in the entirety of West Africa. This brought the city of Mali into the limelight. It became a sophisticated center of learning in the Islamic world courtesy of Musa Manza. He developed Timbuktu and Gao into important cultural centers. He also made them important commercial cities with caravan connections to Egypt 
and other important trade centers in North Africa. The mosque in Sankore Gao laid the foundation for the University of Sankore. The well-built mosque attracted scholars from many countries, who were mainly interested in history, Quranic theology, and law. With these visits from elites, it didn't take long for the mosque to evolve into a teaching center. Mansa Musa left huge legacies aside from his many acquisitions of gold. He sought out development, innovation, and education in addition to his enormous wealth. He contributed to the Islamic faith and promoted scholarships. He ran an African empire smoothly and initiated many of the recent developments we see in the continent today. He put Mali on the map of the world because, prior to his trip to Mecca, the Kingdom of Mali was relatively unknown outside of West Africa, and he didn't enjoy this lack of recognition. The Catalan Atlas, created in 1375 CE by Spanish cartographers, shows West Africa dominated by a depiction of Mansa Musa sitting on a throne, holding a nugget of gold in one hand and a golden staff in the other hand. With the publication of this atlas, Mansa Musa became cemented in the global imagination as a figure of stupendous wealth. He died in 1337, proud of everything he had accomplished in his life. For more videos about the most influential Africans of all time, be sure to hit that subscribe button and turn on the bell notification so you never miss an upload. Thank you very much for watching. We'll catch you guys in the next video.